Hello everybody and welcome to BarkerModern.com. My name is Chad Barker. I'm going to show you today a bit more about our fillers, what makes these guys special. All right, getting started here. Let's get started with a wall closet two inch wide filler. And this is what we're going to usually use for most walk-in closets. Now if you have a reach-in closet, we'll talk about that next, but for the moment let's just talk about uh, our two-piece filler. So basically we're going to assume that we're going to use at least two walls. We're going to do a corner here. And this is going to be a walk-in closet. So just imagine for a minute that our door is somewhere in here. I'm not going to draw this wall, wall in because there's just really no reason. I'm going to make this guy into a wall end. And then I'm going to push this filler to the wall. And now I'm going to use a two-piece filler here. And what I'm looking for right now, this is a horizontal filler. As you see right here, the grain runs horizontal on the face and then uh, also toward the back on the backer. And what we're going to do here is run our filler from the floor, basically up off the floor, to wherever we want the crown molding to start. So in this case, like what we normally do is recommend a elevation. So elevation, I mean off the floor, so from right here, of six inches. That's pretty standard, and that's going to get around our base molding on the floor there to make it so that you can install these closets in a weekend. Getting into removing the base molding and trying to set your closets on the floor, as I say in most of my other videos, is a bit problematic in the fact that if you're going to try to, most of these closets are going to be going into places with carpet uh, or even hardwood flooring and stuff like that. Hardwood floors are a little bit easier, but with carpet, the actual real way to do it is to remove the carpet and then have the carpet tucked up underneath after you install the cabinets. By hanging these on the wall and having a six inch elevation, we're able to wrap base molding on this bottom wall that you don't have to remove, install the cabinets above that, and then we could drop something down in the front if you wish to make it have a more built in toe kick appearance. For this tutorial's sake though, six inches is our recommended standard. Up here at the top, I'm going to do a 96 inch ceiling height. So that's from the top of the finished floor, so the top of the carpet, for example, to the ceiling itself. I have 10 inches right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this up just a little bit higher. Now the horizontal mold, uh, base moldings are only available up to 80 inches tall. You can use a vertical grain filler, so I can't take this horizontal grain filler up any higher than 80 inches. If you want, you can two-piece it, so basically you could say, look, I'm going to be, I want to go up four inches more. I mean, leave four inches at the top. That's how much I'm going to leave for crown molding to tie it into the ceiling. That's kind of our standard. Um, but I can't build it at 86 inches at horizontal grain. The sheets we cut from come at 80 inches wide by 110 inches long. Uh, and there's just not, it's not possible to get horizontal grain out of that sheet. So we'd have to two-piece this one. So I'd do 43 inches. And there's nothing wrong with the two-piece. The seam would be almost impossible to see. Just make sure you get it tight when you're doing the installation. Pretty easy. We have our two fillers there now. You could also do one single vertical grain filler. Yeah, there's no industry standard here. You can do whatever you would like, so just keep that in mind. All right, so that's our two inch wide filler, and then you can do cabinets along the rest of this wall. Now, if you look at this, what I recommend as far as installation of your cabinets is concerned, say we have a wall one door cabinet. I like to keep the base fillers, the two, the two inch wide fillers, at right about three quarters of an inch proud. That way, our 13 16 proud. So when I install the backer, I make the backer, which is basically this piece right here, roughly flush with the face of the cabinet case. So you install this, and then you basically, you would attach your filler to the face of the backer. So that's your backer. This is the face of the filler. This comes in two separate pieces. Attach the backer to the cabinet, and then you can install the face of the filler on there. You can even scribe this filler to the wall if you want to. It adds more time and more, more work to your project. Um, I wouldn't recommend obviously doing that. Just get it tight to the wall and you can have a hairline gap. Typically your walls aren't going to be off that much anyway. Uh, if you do get into it, you can scribe it or even order these fillers extra wide and scribe it on site. That's fine. Okay, so that's pretty much how, how we're looking there. That makes everything flushed up. If we go in and look at it real quick, I'm going to give you guys just a quick view here. I'm not going to get into the cabinet layout. That'll be for a layout tutorial, but I just want you to kind of see how everything flushes up. All right, so there you have it. You see the face of the filler is now flush with the face of the door. Horizontal grain going into the wall. We have a nice look there. Uh, that's going to look real nice as we uh, get this cabinet installation all done. All right, so other options, too, for the fillers. You might say, hey, can I get away with not using a two-inch wide filler? That's wasting a lot of space. Why can't I do 
you know, what you have on there. You have a slim filler. Can we use a slim filler? Absolutely. You absolutely can. Highly recommend if you have a door or drawer, though, the slim filler is a little small for it, and especially on a longer run. Say 134 inches, and you want to use a slim filler here. Just remember that the smaller your filler is, the less play you're going to have over longer distances. Okay, measurements can be slightly off. Walls can be out of square, uh, out of plumb. They could be. You can have a lot of issues that the fillers are going to help you eliminate before they even get started. So let's just say we take a slim filler, for example, and we put it on this wall. Slim fillers are only three quarters of an inch wide. Well, not too bad. When you put your door or when you put your cabinet up to it, you have very little amount of play here. I typically am only going to recommend that you use a slim filler in areas where, number one, you don't, it's, you have a very short distance, so tight areas. So, for example, think of a reach-in closet, something behind, you know, like uh, sliding doors, left and right. They, they come in a lot of the new houses you see out there. And those reach-in closets are going to be very tight. You're going to want to maximize your space because, say, you only have 60 inches to work with, which is a real typical, you know, width of closet. The slim filler might be the best bet. They're not going to have a lot of margin for error. You're going to have two two cabinets, possibly, two or three cabinets side by side. Um, you're not going to have to really worry about too much of that stuff. And the slim fillers are pretty versatile in themselves, but not as versatile as a two-inch white filler. Okay, so that's our slim filler. Now, another thing here, that's pretty much the end of the tutorial as far as the fillers are concerned and how you can install them. Now, other things we can talk about here real quick, I'm going to talk about two things. Number one is going to be corners. A lot of people say, well, hey, how am I supposed to do a corner with fillers? And the answer to that is you don't really need to. Our, all of our corner cabinets come with fillers pretty much already attached. Okay, and what I mean by that, like say for example, the blind corner um, wall cabinets, for example, like this guy. These already have the fillers attached to the face of the cabinet itself. So these things are already sticking out of there. So you don't have to order a separate filler. See our corner cabinet tutorial. You will find that that is a very useful tutorial when talking about corner cabinets. So I'm not going to give them that here. You can always use and mock up extra two inch wide fillers by or, or even wider than that. You can you can take fillers, you know, all the way up to six inches or so. But let's just say, for example, we wanted to make a you know a dead space here. I've seen people do this. I I don't recommend it because I think you're gonna lose a lot of space. It's just not my favorite. But if you were gonna do this, let's just say you took this and you ordered a six inch wide filler. Is that what it is? No, it's four inches. And then you have a two inch wide here and you want to have two inches left. If you are going to do a filler out of corners and you're just going to burn this extra storage space, I, which I don't recommend doing, make this filler like one or two inches wider and then just have the other one die off into the face. It doesn't cost that much more to get a four inch wide filler compared to a two inch, so you're going to save yourself a lot of headache in, down the road. You could also use this other piece for something if you wanted to cut it off, but the ultimate goal here is uh, during installation, it's nice to have this piece that you can, you know, you can pull in or out you know, as needed to make it line up perfectly with the other one and trying to make everything exact. As we all know in construction, nothing's perfectly exact. Now our cabinets are dead on, they're CNC and everything like that, but your walls are not going to be exact. You're going to have little issues, might have made a, a slight error in your measurements and fillers can really save you um, as we move into there. All right, so that is that. And now the last thing I want to talk to you about is the controversial question of using absolutely no fillers in the closet whatsoever. This was brought up uh, by my father, actually, saying, hey, just get around not even using it. And I was like, well, that's, that's not a bad idea. The idea here is to leave a quarter-inch gap between the wall and your cabinets. And you will maximize your storage space by doing this, but the seam might be a little weird. Okay. You have a quarter inch gap between the wall. You're, you basically measure your wall out. So say, for example, you have 116 and 9 sixteenths. And then you just leave, say, a quarter of an inch or a half of an inch. Let's just do a half point five. A quarter of an inch would probably be perfectly fine on smaller runs. So say something like a 60 inch wide run. You leave a quarter inches at each end. And I think you'd probably be OK. Uh, I have not tried this personally, uh, but I would imagine that, oh, what happened right there? It's weird. Oh. Hmm. Uh, you'd probably be fine in the fact that you'd be able to maximize your storage space, and you'd probably get another about, you know, four inches or so of extra space. So let's just do 0.25. So on wall to wall. So the idea here is that you whatever 
problems you're going to have on the wall, you're expecting it to be less than a quarter of an inch, rolling the dice a little bit. If you do have issues and you're running door cabinets, it's really hard to cut down the cabinets. I mean, as you see, these things are dead on. I mean, they're, you know, when you order a 18 inch wide cabinet, it comes at 18 inches. So, you know, it's hard to shave them down. You can't exactly go and, you know, sand down one side of the cabinet. So use your best judgment there. Uh, I'd still recommend using fillers, so that's why I said it as number one. Number two, slim fillers are your second best option. Number three, no fillers, but leave yourself a quarter inch gap between the cabinets. I mean, the cabinets and the wall, okay? And the idea there is that you really don't see it because the door kind of covers it. So let's take a look at this. You can see right here the door pretty much covers. I mean, you're not going to see the face of the cabinet case anyways. So there would be, you know, you know, three-eighths of an inch gap between the door and the wall right there. You wouldn't, it wouldn't draw your eye. So the theory is sound. I like where it's going right there. But you do have to remember other things. If you look at the top view here, and let's say there's a doorway, like we said earlier. There's a doorway coming into this area right here. Doorways typically have casing around them, right? If you have drawers here, you need to make sure that that drawer is not going to open up. I mean, look at this. Look at how small of a you know dimension right there. We can look at, I'll give you the actual dimension here. That's a quarter of an inch from the wall there, but to the actual door, oops, sorry. Five sixteenths, okay? Very, very tight. So most casing is not going to be five sixteenths deep. So for example, you know, your casing might come all the way out to here. You know, usually half inch, three quarters of an inch casing. Uh, that's going to be an issue if you have drawers because you open that drawer and that thing's going to hit that casing and you're going to be looking at it like, ah, I mis misordered. And reordering drawer cabinets are expensive because you have to remake the drawers, the cabinet. You know, pretty much everything has to be remade on the cabinet. So it's not something we can just be like, hey, let's just ship out a couple of new parts. That's a, that's a big deal. Obviously, other ways to fix the thing here would be just to use a 2-inch filler. The 2-inch filler removes the issue for your drawers opening into the casing and, again, solves more headaches as we use fillers. Okay? So those are our options. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to send us an email at info at barkermodern.com. My name is Chad Barker, and I hope you guys had a fun time. Thank you. Have a good day.